Hello friends. So once again, welcome you back to my channel. So last uh, video, we in the last video, we have seen the use of link register whenever we are making a subroutine linkage and how to use it and all that we have already seen. So in this video, we are going to see limitation of link register. What is the uh, problem associated with link register? So see, we'll take up one example. Say we are executing one program that will start from main. Say main starts in memory, means the instruction for main starts in memory at address 1000. Then we'll keep on doing the instructions. And in the main, say we are calling one function. So to call a function, that means to call a subroutine, we use the instruction call, call P. That means we are calling another function whose name is P, whose address is represented by the symbolic name P, right? And here each instruction, uh, the next instruction is located at 1024, it is given. So when we use link register, in our system, there is only one link register, right? So as part of call instruction execution, what we used to do? address of the next instruction that is 1024 will be stored in the link register. So there is one link register and the link register will hold the value what? 1024 as part of call instruction execution. This is done and PC will be loaded with the address of address represented by this symbolic name P. So let's say the symbolic name P represents address 2000. That means our next instruction execution will start at location 2000 that is the function for p, uh, the function p or subroutine p so here at 2000 first instruction of subroutine is there then we'll continue let's say p inside p again we are calling another function q right so at address set 2040 call q instruction is there that means we are going to start another function that is name is q and my next instruction is at 2044 so when we execute this call queue, what we will do? We will store our return address. What is return address? The next instructions address, that is 2044. So when we execute call queue, that time we'll be storing our return address in the link register. So we will do that. So this value will be overwritten and now it will take 2044, right? This will store 2044, done. Now, and after that, PC will be loaded with the address of Q, right? Let's say it is 3000. So at 3000, Q will start. So Q will continue. It's fine. It's still now it's going on fine. Now I will return from Q sometime. So at suppose this is the instruction to return. On return from a function, we have seen what we used to do. The value of link register will be given to PC. So PC will take the value what? 2044. Good. We have taken 2044. So where we'll come back? We'll come back to this instruction. That is very good. So we'll continue the next part of function P. We'll continue doing that. And at some time, this is there is a return instruction. So when we execute this return instruction, that time also what we will do? Whatever is the value of uh, link register, that will be given to PC. That is what? 2044. So again, where you will go? Again, you will go here. But where is, where should you land up? You should go back to your caller. Your caller was main. So you should go to 1024, not to yourself only, right? So that was the problem here. Please see here properly. Whenever I will return from P, that time I will take the value of link register content into PC. So link register was holding 2044. That will be given to PC. So that will take you to this instruction. Whereas, when you return from P, you should go back to your caller. Who was your caller? Main. So you should go back to this 1024, but you are returning to what? 2044. So that is the problem. You should not do this. Whenever you return from P, you should go back to your caller, but that is not happening here. So hope you can make out that why I'm unable to do so. I'm unable to do so only because I have only one hardware only one storage to store my return address. So if at all, I need to store multiple return addresses, then I will not be able to do so because I have only one placeholder. That is my link register. Due to that, my return address for P, return address for P was 1024. Means uh, P will return back to 1024. That was overwritten by uh, this one. 
uh, whenever I'm calling Q, that time 2044 is overwriting that content. Due to this, sorry, due to this, we have reached this erroneous situation. So hope this part is clear. This is the limitation of link register. So as a summary, we can conclude that using link register, it is not possible to support subroutine nesting. That means one function is calling another, another is calling another one more or itself also, that time also we will not be able to support it, right? But see, but link register was good enough in our earlier stage. That means when we start developing our code, assembly language coding, our processor status and all, that time it was fine because suppose we have started with writing your subroutines. So one program will be main, then it will be calling P and once it is over, again you'll come back here, again you do something, again you are calling something, again you return back here. So that was going on fine. But if we do complex coding where one function can call another function, that time the situation is not supported with this hardware that is link register. So this part is clear. But see, in our uh, this general uh, situation, we may have to write such a code where nesting of function is highly required, right? Then what would be the solution? Solution will be your, what we can do that our return addresses we can store on a data structure termed as stack. So now uh, see, first the, this is the conclusion, nesting of functions and or subroutines is not supported using link register. But this how only we cannot continue. We may have to use your nesting of functions. So that time we will be using stack. Stack is going to help us. What we will do using stack? See, whenever a function calls, whenever a call instruction is executed, whenever a call instruction is executed, whatever be the return address, that will be pushed onto the stack. That means address of the next instruction will be return address will be pushed, right? And whenever you return, that time whatever is there on the top of the stack, that will be given to PC. This is how we are going to use stack. So see, uh, I'll explain this with ex the same example. So that means yeah, the same example is supported by stack that I'm going to prove. So at address 1000 main is starting, then I'm calling P. When I will call P, that time what will happen? Suppose uh, something was there on the stack, suppose the stack was 5000 here some value 20 was there when i write call p means when i execute call p then what will happen on the stack one push operation will take place and that will store 1024 right that means will store my return address done after that your pc will be loaded with what your pc will be loaded with the address represented by p that means in our example it was 2000 so i'll start function p i'll continue function p and sometimes say I'm executing call queue. Again, I will do the same thing. What that is? Same thing. The same thing is now I'll again perform a push operation. 1992. What I will push? The return address. That is 2044. So this at 2044 will be stored onto the stack. Done. Now see. Uh, and then PC will be loaded with the starting address of function queue. Right. That is 3000 in our case. So we'll start 3000 at 3000 and we'll continue executing instructions. Sometime we'll execute return in queue. Whenever we execute return in the function queue, what we will do? We'll pop the top stack element into your PC. So PC will be loaded with what? 2044. 2044 will take you where? To your this instruction. So you will continue executing now function P from wherever you have left, from the next instruction of that, you'll continue. So you will continue at some time this 2070 return is there. So the, see whenever you have done this pop operation, this location is there no more, right? So now when we execute return, what is there on the top? 1024. That will be given to PC. So PC will start from what? 1024. So 1024 is the my return address after coming back from P. So from here I will continue and after continuing it, I will complete some time. This is how it is going to support nesting of uh, functions. Nesting of functions or subroutines. See, here I have shown you P is calling Q. You may go up to any level. Q is calling R, R is calling P. Again, it is doing, so in some way you can do it. Until and unless uh, you can support uh, that uh, 
return addresses are stored on the stack that means you can do up to that level of nesting right so stack is a good solution not good stack is the solution to support your nesting why stack because see whenever we have started see here when we started main is calling p p is calling q but when you are returning first q will complete then you will return to p then you return to main so the order of going on the stack uh, the order of storing the values is opposite to the order of taking out the values so see means whosoever is entered first will be taken last right so at the sc here whatever return address i have stored last that will be taken out first then this one so because of that lifo order data structure is required for supporting your nesting of subroutines and due to that stack is the solution when we have to use nesting of subroutines so this much is there in this video in the next video we'll see one example where we will be uh, executing one function and return address and all we are storing on the stack so thank you and if you are getting from my explanation then please like my videos and subscribe to my channel thank you